Okay, so good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Greetings and welcome to the 36th session of the online Optom Learning Series. Uh, I would like to welcome you all again back onto this uh, online Optom Learning Series. Uh, let me introduce to you uh, to our speaker for today. So today we have optometrist Chirag Gajar. Uh, he has completed his bachelor's and masters of optometry from the Nagar School of Optometry in Gujarat. He then went ahead and finished his eyewear dispensing course or eyewear designing course to be more precise at a university from Italy. Currently he is in India and he has started his own optometry clinic and a retail outlet and uh, he is going to talk to us today about uh, the designing aspect of an eyewear where probably he'll give us some idea on some future career opportunities and how does the designing of an eye glasses or eyewear or spectacles goes about so welcome uh, chirag and uh, thank you very much for taking out time uh, please go ahead okay uh, good morning Prudin. good morning everyone and uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. So uh, now, uh, uh, today's, uh, today's this lecture is more about uh, an information or it is more about a career, a new career option for an optometrist. So uh, I would like to ask a quick question. Uh, you guys can answer it in chat box. So, uh, how many of you have ever thought to become an eyewear designer um, as an optometrist or after completing uh, of your uh, graduation? So, um, uh, we can wait for 20-30 seconds and uh, you can answer it in chat box. So, I can get an idea that how much uh, fruitful this session will be. So, please answer it and uh, we will wait for a few seconds. Surely, I'll just help you out with the answers. So, probably uh, you can type a yes or a no for the audience if you have thought about uh, eyewear designing as uh, one of uh, your career opportunities or were you aware of this particular uh, way forward. We have a mix of answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have. A couple of them saying yes, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's like a 50 50, I think. From now, we have okay, got about 15 to 20 responses, and uh, yeah, I, I would say it's a 50 50. Half of them uh, said no, they probably maybe even not aware of this or they didn't think about that's a career option and half of them uh, probably knows about this and they might be looking forward on how they can approach or go forward with that. So yeah, I think 50-50 about that. Oh, okay, that's great. So I think it will be helpful to both the groups because if someone wants to become an IR designer, I can share that um, the path or the institute and uh, for those who say no, so they can think about these new options. Okay, so can you start? Yes, please. Yes, please. I think you can, you can go ahead. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Already, Kutudin uh, has uh, told my uh, that uh, path from optometrist to an eyewear designer, but uh, I would like to share a small story or the why I wanted to become an eyewear designer. So, I have completed my bachelor and masters from uh, Nagar School of Optometry, uh, but during my optometry, I always more interested in uh, dispensing optics or dispensing optometry. And uh, subjects like that, uh, frame materials and uh, frame types, frame shapes, mm, then uh, frame selection according to face shape, then troubleshooting. So, and I was more interested in art, and also I was 
participating in a poster making. So somewhere I wanted to connect this optometry with design and art. And uh, during that time, I have asked so many people and I have searched a lot, but I didn't found the professional eye design course. So I have started, um, I have heard that after doing a jewelry design, you can apply that knowledge in uh, IV design also. Mm, so I have done one year uh, diploma in jewelry design, uh, but after completing jewelry design, I was able to design glasses with uh, luxury gemstone, diamonds. But those glasses are not uh, people are not buying uh, in routine or for routine work. So um, I was not satisfied. Uh, and I was not confident in design. And uh, after uh, during the time, I have started my own optical retail. So during practice, I uh, so many people are saying that I am not looking good with the glasses or frames. Are I, I have difficulty to choose the frames. So somewhere the, the, that th uh, thought was uh, there to that I would like to design a glasses for that particular person or for him or her so he or she can carry those glasses with confident and uh, I want to decor that uh, face of his or her so again I have started searching and finally in 2017 I found a professional eyewear design course uh, the institute name is Chatortica uh, it is in Italy and uh, the name of the area is Longarone, and uh, that area is known uh, as the heart of an eyewear because um, there are, I think, I can say that more than 100 eyewear factories are there. The grand factories are also there. The big players like Luxotica, Safilo, Devito, then the um, pioneer of the uh, acetate, the Masukali. So they, they are situated there. So I was very happy that I will get a good experience, good exposure uh, for eyewear design. And the grand, the grand eyewear designers are living in that area. So I have applied in 2017. And finally, I got an opportunity. Uh, and I was selected. So um, in this way, I uh, become an optometrist from eyewear designer. Now, uh, why to become an eyewear designer? Definitely money, yes, because any design field, uh, you do not have to do it from office. You can do it from home also as a freelancer. So uh, part time or full time. So you can earn extra income or you can create an extra income. Now, um, if you look at some statistics, the global eyewear market size was valued one thirty eight point seven US billion dollar in two thousand three, and that grow eight point one percent at a compound annual growth rate. Here is a global eyewear market. So the seventy five percent of the market is covered by uh, spectacles and sunglasses. The rest of is from uh, uh, the uh, contact lens and other optometry uh, field. And why it will grow like um, uh, on a great rate? Because the premium optical brands are now focusing on quality materials, new color options, new shapes, the classic designs. So definitely eyewear industry, or we can say that the spectacle frames and sunglasses uh, this industry will grow and nowadays new technologies like 3d printing is definitely used a lot in making eyewear then we can uh, i don't know if uh, you guys have heard or not the people are shifting from the big brands to a personalized eyewear handcrafted eyewear so definitely the future of an eyewear designer is bright and if you look at the point of uh, the end consumer, the end consumer's view, 
they are uh, following the trend. Uh, if you think that few years back, the people were buying one or two frames in three years, and they are carrying the, uh, that frame even for business, even for marriage functions, even for sports. They, they are not following that style in fashions like shoes and other accessories. So nowadays, people are buying a different frame for occasion like marriage or uh, teenage if there is a teenage who is uh, involved in sports he is buying a frame particular play and which is technically strong with a good grip so now people are more aware about the style fashion even technology particularly uh, about eyewear or if we um, I, I can give a small example that nowadays metal frames are in trend they were preferred in 80s and 90s but now a metal round frame is in fashion and people are using it for casual and business also definitely acid frames are in fashion but people are accept accepting more metal frames because the celebrity or celebrities are also using that people are following the trend and then one plus point also of e-commerce or online shopping. Now, uh, if anybody is purchasing online, they are looking at more than 50, 60 frames in few minutes, and they are know already what is in trade. Even if they will not buy from uh, online and they will come to your shop, they know better about the print and the new collection so as an eyewear designer we can explain them better if we know something about this design and all this trend so the people will recommend even your store that he knows the what is updated collection and all these things so definitely eyewear design can help you in your optometry career even during your dispensing also, even you are in optical retail, even sometimes in clinic also, you can suggest them a better frames and they will definitely believe you because you are in the clinic. So um, this is the, these are the reasons that you should become an eyewear designer. Now, how to become an eyewear designer? So, uh, creating a pair of eyeglasses is a combination of art and product design. We know very well that glasses are dealing with vision. So, it is not only, uh, it, it should not be aesthetically good, not only aesthetically uh, good, but it should be also technically a perfect because after all, it is considered as medical device also. So, Definitely optometrists know it better. Now, who can do eyewear design? So here I have given few examples. A graduation from product design, industrial design, fashion design, accessory design, jewelry design, and optometrists. They all can do eyewear design. But I feel that optometrists definitely create a based eyewear design as compared to other fields why because we already have studied during our optometry we know about the frame materials we know about the boxing system we know about the terminology or anatomy of the frame we know everything about those hinges then the frame shape face shape also we have studied and uh, definitely pentascopic angles, play angle, then uh, facial wear. So we are a step ahead from this other field. And what we have to learn, just few software. And nowadays the softwares are not so much complicated. They are more user friendly. So definitely we can learn easily and create a good glasses. And sometimes if uh we want to design a personalized glasses if there is a high mile minus eight so we know that he needs a good thick frame but it should be also 
uh, aesthetically good on his or her face. So we can create a customized frame also if we know all these technologies and this eyewear design process. So uh, definitely a good career option for an optometrist to become an eyewear designer. Uh, everybody is agree. Um, you can answer in chat box so I can get an idea that uh, okay, so it will be helpful. Okay, so now what is design? Design is a plan or drawing produced to show the look and function or working of a building, garment, or other objects before it is made. In general, what is design? The drawing of the product which is going to be produced, but a perfect drawing can reduce the risk of that product loss or the failure. So definitely design will help a lot to whole production line. So design should be perfect. Now, uh, particular for design, Steve Jobs is an idol for me. Why? Because he, he believes that design is not just what it looks like, like but design it how it works now before iPhone was done why iPhone is famous not because of it because it is costly and it is made from premium material but there was a, a one good reason behind creating the iPhone from point of view of the design before iPhone was launched there were already mobile phones in the market. But we know that those mobile phones were with so many keypads. So from uh, if we want to go from one application to other application, from message to contact to contact settings, we have to press those keys so many times, and then we can reach to the other application. So here comes the design, exact meaning of design, how it works. He thought that I want to make a mobile without any or any keyboard. I don't know. It should be user friendly and we can make a life easier because he knows that in future mobile is a necessity. Mobile will be necessity. So what he has done is he removed and he made the screen. So even illiterate people nowadays they can use mobile easily. So that is design. Here is a small video of his presentation of first iPhone. It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, how do you solve this? Hmm. It turns out we have solved it. We solved it in computers 20 years ago. We solved it with a bitmap screen that could display anything we want, put any user interface up, and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? We solved this problem. So how are we gonna take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're gonna do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. Okay, so that is the exact definition of design. Now, how can we relate that with the glasses? Here you can see that there is a one dumbbell-like structure. So, one of the best designer name is Philip Stark. He has developed this particular design with the inspiration from a sphere. And he made this screwless hinge or screwless glasses. Why? Because even you guys have seen that during your practice, so many customers are coming to service to, for the service that the screw is loose or fitting is not good, and he is not comfortable with the glasses. So what Philip Star has done, he has removed the screw and he made a flexible thin wire with this uh, double-like structure or sphere. So this type of hinge can last for so many years. So in this way, we can make people's life easier.
and uh, we can uh, develop this type of uh, uh, innovative designs because we already know during our practice what problems are facing by uh, the, the customers. Now, uh, so we have seen that uh, the, the why to become an IV designer and how we can become an IV designer. Now, I will give a brief introduction about IV design process. So, oh, these are the six steps of IV design process. The first is moonboard and design brief, logo design and identity, sketch and 2D, 3D design and rendering, colorization, packaging and display. Now we will uh, look into this uh, six, six steps in uh, not that much detail, but uh, I will explain what are those steps. So mood board and design brief. Now what is mood board? So on the right side, you can see that it is a one picture with uh, a collage. In that you can see that inspiration, target audience, then color combination of materials, price segment, brand strategy, all these things are created in one uh, poster or one mood board. So by this, if your client is telling that I want to create a collection for a particular target audience, and uh, we can express with the pictures that how future product will look like. Okay, with the materials and color combinations, all those things. So it can give a clear picture of those discussion or description. They can also realize better that okay, my future product will be like this. So we are so we are more accurate in creating that uh, collection. So it conveys the vibe and general aesthetic of future product. In short, now. Here I have created uh, during my project there is a mood board. This is the one of the example. On the left side, you can see that there is a mood board, and on the right side, the product. So before creation of the product, we have created this mood board. So you can see that in the background there is a wooden texture, those two colors. And uh, on the there is a gold in, on the back side there is a gold metallic texture. So the client can uh, get an idea. Okay, it will be used or it will be created by noble materials. Now uh, in that small images you can see that it is a handcrafted. The few things are handcrafted. So definitely I want to create a glasses with craftsmanship so definitely it will be a premium product or luxury product materials are noble it is hand created then uh, i have i have shown that personality who will carry these glasses definitely a 15 or 18 year teenage will not buy these glasses because it is it is something like a luxury so i have mentioned the target also that my target customers or target audience is age 30 and above price is definitely high because it is created by titanium and uh, wood so it will be special edition and on the right side now from that mood board and inspiration on the right side there is a two glasses the shapes are one is round and the other is rectangular so classic shapes simple and on the temples, I think, uh, is it visible or not? But uh, you can see uh, in the down uh, gray, uh, wooden gray frame, uh, there is a hand uh, created or yeah, there is a pattern. So, and a uh, bold look. Okay, so that is the mood board, which express the future product. Uh, I can give uh, another example, so you can get a better idea. This is the contrast from the first one mood board. So that mood board was like a vintage or traditional. Here there is another example of modern architecture. I have used, I want to create a product which inspired from modern architecture. And in modern architecture nowadays, you can you have seen that this type of suspended stairs or the, the, the suspension things. So the concept is suspension with modern architecture. Now uh, you can see uh, that wall which is hanging 
the RCC wall, which is hanging, then that uh, that room, small room, which is suspended, and there is it is in the air. It, then, uh, so what are the characteristics of these these pictures? So it shows the strength as well as, uh, for example, that wall. It is a strong, but it gives the feels like lightweight. Change in curiosity. People think two minutes or two seconds more than how how it is created, and it is a change. It is if the wall is normally created, no one will look at that. But it is in the air. So it creates change and curiosity, art and innovation. And if the, those things are suspended, so it gives a feel of cleanliness, then uh, modern design. So these are the characteristics I want to apply in eyewear. So on the right side, you can see that those glasses, those two lenses uh, that uh, the silver frame, two glasses are suspended with the bar, and in between there is a clear space. So it gives a feel like a suspended glasses. So there is the mood board. Hope uh, you guys uh, are clear with this. Okay, so now we will move to the second part. After completing mood board, the second part is logo design and identity. Sometimes, okay, client have been logo, but not, then we have to create a logo for them. Now, what is logo? An ideal logo for the product promotion, marketing, and branding. The major gain is it helps to stand out among the crowd and create identity. Definitely, people will remember a product with logo, they will trust that logo. If you have a quality product, they will look first at that logo. It is original or duplicate. Okay, so simple, strong, and clever logo for an iron brand is a good canvas for of the product line. Uh, here is the uh, one of the examples that I have created for my project, uh, one logo. Now I have created my brand name is Warmi. So it is the name of the god, the Hindu beliefs. In this world, who are dealing with the creativity and art, and that swan or the bird is the vehicle of this god. And I want to create this logo for eyewear. So these three things I have merged in this way. This is a V. So two V's, that symbol of the swan and V for Varmi. So these two ones are creating a heart shape. Okay, and those two direction or those two faces of that one shows that we will or this brand will progress in all direction or both the direction. That heart shows that whatever I will design or whatever I will create, I will create by my heart. And typical round shape, so people can remember it easily. That glasses, okay, round. They remember. We generally think first around shape. So how this identity is created, this logo is created so people can remember it easily. Here are the uh, few other famous logos so you can uh, understand it better. So what is the meaning of this Ray-Ban, Ray-Ban logo? It is written simply a Ray-Ban, that's it, but no. In the center there is a dot which shows that the rays, harmful rays coming to your eyes and our glasses will ban that. So we will protect your eyes. So that is the meaning of Ray-Ban. Now, the other is Amazon. Because every logo have feelings. Before, before starting that company, they have a feeling that we will do this thing by this emotions or logic or this ethics. So Amazon, we will deliver A to Z product. So there is an arrow from A to Z. A to Z product to the customers. And with a smile, a smile arrow. Now, this Baskin and Robbins, it is the famous brand of ice cream. So you can see that pink 31, there is a written 31. Why is 31? Baskin and Robbins is the two partners, so B and R. And that 31 is the ice cream is famous for those 31 flavors. So in this way, you can create a creative logo 
for your client. Now, logo design and identity. Now, what is identity? So, first you have created this logo for the brand. Now, you have to create identities for the uh, particular collection. Here is one of the example of this model of Ray-Ban. So, it is very famous. Uh, so, what is that? You can see that pole or the ring in the center. Now, why, why it is there? Because this model was developed for the hunters or shooters. And most of the shooters are smokers. So whenever they went to or shooting or living in the jungle, so they cannot put the cigar down side, okay, on the floor. So they kept the cigar or cigarette here and they take the aim. So this is one of the identity, but afterwards it become a fashion. Fashion. So this is identity. Uh, here I can show a small video again of the Philip Star. He has created an identity or a technical part to uh, it gives the unique uh, that, um, identity to the customers, or the, it can help also. Uh, I think uh, if you after seeing the video, you can get it better. Now you can get an idea that how that small 360 degree hinge or 360 degree movement he, he has expressed by doing yoga or stretching and it speaks everything about that product. So that is an identity. <coughs> now we will look in the third step, sketch and 2D design. Okay, so now we have everything in in mind or imaginations and product it will be like this. Now, what can help you? A sketch, a rough sketch. A rough sketch, sketching is a meditation. So when you start a rough sketch, it will come onto your paper that whatever you have imagined. Okay, and you can now work with the details. Mm, few flowers I have shown that or the, the diamonds or then stones, you can arrange it better. So, a rough sketch will help you. And then, after doing the rough sketch, here is the 2D design. Now, in eyewear, or I think in every accessory design, the 2D design should be uh, understand two ways. <clears throat> First is aesthetic point of view. So, here is the aesthetic point of view. In that, you can see that few color combinations, then the basic parameters, how product will look like. Okay, <clears throat> and you can do it for uh, by using uh, these few softwares, Sketchbook, CorelDRAW, Photoshop, Illustrator, and they, they those softwares are very easy. Okay, and a few of them are free on uh, MacBook also, Sketchbook also. And uh, you can easily get those software and you can start learning your free time in your free, free time. And also for sketching, you can um, see the videos on YouTube, how to start sketching for beginner. So you can start your practice also. So this is here, this picture shows the aesthetic point of 2D design. And the next is a little bit about technical. Here, as we uh, discussed in previous slides, definitely Optown knows all those parameters, the pentascopic angle, temple length, A size, B size, DBL, even they know where PD, IPD will work better, effective diameter. So this is the technical point of view of the 2D design. Okay, so we can create 
this also by the way softwares okay so this is the power set now we will uh, forward to the uh, 3d design and rendering okay so we have created a finished 2d design and we know all the thickness and all the parameters now we can apply it in 3d now how 3d design will help okay so it, it uh, we can get a perfect product view in software before the production okay so even production department also can understand 90-95% that how we will create this or how we will make it. Also, we can apply this 3D design in marketing also by creating uh, this type of uh, floating glasses or we can kept it in anywhere. You know that now 3D that people are creating like it is a real. Okay, so it is 3D design and rendering. Rendering means you can apply color materials. Uh, here we can uh, uh, see that the white gold and yellow gold with the dark glasses so that is a rendering we can um, select from the software also so generally uh, these two softwares are used there are other softwares also but these two softwares are used for 3d and rendering so Reno Chilo or Ryan Chilo's 3d it's for making 3d and key shot key shot is for rendering okay so these are also the other example of 3d and rendering so i know how my product will look like exactly with the same thickness in 3d so the client is more confident about his investment or you can also uh, i have created this small animation you can also use that in uh, marketing also. Oops. This is just an example. So it takes a lot of, uh, lot of time to create this two second or three second uh, video. And it requires a um, new, brand new computer or with good, uh, with the good uh, hardware. Okay, so now colorization. Okay, so our 3D is ready, product is almost <coughs> ready now. We have to select the color. For color, we should understand the target audience first and trend and fashion also. So, target audience, if we are going to make a product for kids, it should be something like that with uh, bright colors or garden characters like avengers and uh, the marvel characters <clears throat> and if we are creating for business class or more formal collection it should be black decent then dark blue or gun metal so this type of colors um so this is the this is the colorization which can help a lot uh, in success or the people follow uh, the trendy colors <clears throat> because uh, uh, I don't know you have observed or not in one season there are typical 10 colors okay which leads the whole fashion era or uh, sorry uh, fashion uh, which leads the, 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 the all uh, fashion garments and uh, accessories or everything because so you can yeah, get those trends and get those colors from internet and you can apply uh, the same color combinations so your product will definitely get a success okay <clears throat> and uh, also for the acetate also for the metal also uh, here is the slide for acetate how you can create the different combinations uh, so this is the colorization it is also a very important part because people will attract from those colors now uh, packaging and display so uh, packaging keeps your product different from other in the line because whenever for example 
with the online service okay and whenever they open they will first look at the package so it is a most important part or it can create the wow experience of the customer by the product packaging here um, I have created one example that packaging is semi transparent and with one small hook so that hook can help your glasses or it will prevent your glasses to get scratched from the surface of those of the package and it is semi transparent so in in my house if i have four glasses or my family have for example seven glasses different so we can get we can look or we can identify easily that okay it is mine and i will pick that all those those are open glasses we have to every time open okay so better this transparent glasses are transparent package with their food so their glasses will be prevented <clears throat> so this is one of the example of packaging uh, already we have seen this uh, handcrafted wooden case so definitely this pair will not be two or three so i this this gives the personalized or something luxury feel to the glasses so this is one of the example of packaging on the right side again i have created a transparent uh, fiber sheet so we can identify our glasses easily and uh, you know very well nowadays even in in uh, tv or advertisement everything is depend on packaging they are using the the color psychology also in that if they are creating uh, something for food or uh, something restaurant so they are using the colors which uh, make you more hunger like uh, mcdonald they are using yellow and red color so uh, color psychology also matters a lot during packaging creation of packaging now display it is not uh, okay it is not necessary that you know about this because it is more about uh, architecture and interior designer sometimes uh, you uh, you have already visited uh, so many optical fairs so there are huge uh, uh, stalls are that in exhibition so if you are launching a new collection or new brand you can apply that concept same concept in the store that creation of the store so people can remember or it can give additional value to your collection here i have created this stall with a logo on glass and it, you can see that those all displays are suspended so the feel of the modern architecture the feminineness and strength all those characteristics i have applied in uh, creating this display so you can also give an advantage or just a concept to your client so they will more happy <clears throat> so this is all about the eyewear design okay so those six steps basic steps mm, now i will show a small video so it will make you understand that understand that our this design process will help a lot to whole production department in next video you can see those small steps of the production and how design will help you in each and every step so here is the small video
ओके डन होप सेशन इज ऑडिबल एंड इट इज इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर एवरीवन ओके सो थैंक यू नाउ एनी क्वेश्चन और एनी डाउट्स uh yes chirag i think it was very elaborative uh, personally i feel that uh, there were quite a few things which uh, we probably are not aware you know when it comes to i designing i web designing and uh, thank you very much for your very uh, detailed uh, session we do have uh, a couple of questions uh, let me just read okay. them out for you uh the first one says that uh, when it comes to eyewear designing which is the best way do you think in terms of uh, uh designing as well as the productivity whether it's the cutting of sheet method is better or do you think that the 3d printing would be much more better or whether it's a injection molding so which one do you think would be better in all aspects okay mm, i can say that mm, each and every technology has their advantage and limitations for example okay 3d printing is easy and if you learn a few 3d softwares you can make 3d print easily but the limitations are it takes time you cannot produce it in uh, bulk or mass production you cannot do and uh, it have limitations of colors also you cannot You you cannot use the colors like acetate. Acetate have a big range of colors. So there are advantages and disadvantages of each and every technology. I think you can find it uh, easily on Google, or I can uh, give detail also about uh, those uh, those technologies or those materials. Injection molding in injection molding, uh, there is a okay. The mass production is. compulsory if you will not uh, have a mass production or big order you cannot uh, afford that injection molding because that one die or one mold cost a lot okay to produce the, the injection molding uh, model so every technology have advantages and disadvantages for for example hand crafted okay if i want to create a hand crafted we have or i have to be a master for creating that uh, handcrafted material we have to find someone who can create in perfect way or it should be durable so in this way th there are different uh, the, the points about these technologies would it also depend on the design probably if you are doing a design in a way which can only be created by one of the technique do you think that also matters the designing part or that that doesn't really matter no designing part will definitely help in uh, each and every method okay or if we want to create a acetate that designing part will leads the machine to cnc machines okay as we have seen the last video so those thickness and everything will define so those machines will work accurate so design part will definitely help in each and every product without that the final production is very very difficult and yeah. it can create so much complication and it, the risk of the failure is high so definitely design part will uh, help a lot yeah uh, the next question says that uh, about the about the y suspension thing what you showed in your picture earlier on or any okay. specially designed spectacles what you think uh, will it not be easier for normal optical stores to repair would that be a problem because when you have some special kind of suspension which we use and if they were to go to a normal optical store probably they might not know how to repair so is it a advantage or do you think it's a disadvantage that they have to come back to you Uh, all the time to repair or mend the frames okay so 
those designs in uh, the suspension collection so technically those designs are like uh, for example which uh, which i have explained that those two lenses are suspended so it is technically it is a simple that a one supra frame you have seen that the thread so it those glasses were just uh, folded by the thread only so it is simple to repair so th there are no complications in that but it just gives that feels or that characteristics uh, is used are used in uh, creating that model so it is more about aesthetic so technically the frames are almost those three basic types that full frame with the screw we where we fit the screws and it holds the lenses then supra frame and that rimless okay and if there, there are few brands which creates this type of typical product so they always give the instruction okay you can do this and also they can give the uh, those uh, small courses or small sessions they are organized they, they organize to make uh, those repairing or service part easier for the opticians so i think it is it is not the uh, big problem is not should be not a major issue you just need to uh, probably contact the manufacturer and then they would guide you on how to do that right yeah okay uh, uh, if the salesman is coming to your shop and they, they show that product they explain it at that time because before the optician they are more conscious about those things that we should explain it in better way so after sales service they are a little bit um, free or they are um, yeah, they don't free. have headache after after service <laughs> if you put it that way they want to have less headache yes. uh, right yeah that's right and uh, the other the other interesting question was uh, for uh, a, a primary uh, you know a small optical practice or a small scale practice if you want to go into manufacturing a particular product what do you think are the minimum uh, you know measurements in terms of, of personalized frame which you would actually want to take so let's say if a patient especially they are asking about the small kids so when there is a kid or anybody for that matter who walks into your practice and you want to make a personalized frame for them what do you think are the basic measurements uh, you would like to take okay so for kids fitting is most important okay so we have to take care of mainly we have to take care of head width okay because sometimes it happens that the for, especially for kids they have more space over here and the glasses are too 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 far from so the vertical distance is too high so we can control or we can take precise measurement of this nose that the display angle, the rep angle, and head width also, and temple width because temple width is the biggest, um, we can say, biggest problem with the ready made glasses because kids yeah. have temple length 120, 125 millimeter. So, few brands are okay giving good, uh, they, that they are good statistics and they are creating perfect length, but in kids, Definitely, we as an optician or optical retail, we have to definitely change those band, temple bands, and all those things. So, whenever you are going to create a personalized frame for kid, you can take care of that uh, temple length. So, the glasses will fit perfectly according to that vertex distance and uh, it will uh, be more comfortable. Yeah. So, and temple length are more important. The most important one okay i think somebody does follow you on instagram i think they have seen your new instagram filter uh, they say that that could be one of the way how to promote uh, or how to have uh, you know uh, the way to promote your eyewear designing because there was one question related to the same thing can you suggest on any tips or procedures for branding of the frame if you were beginners in terms of eyewear industry so one of it i think would be creating instagram filters so people know about it any other tips 
Um, yes, Instagram filters will definitely uh, a new thing because uh, augmented reality is uh, is in trend. So yes. one of that example, then uh, you can uh, the other way depend depend on the product which you have. So uh, Instagram, then those animation which I have created, you can create those animations. In uh, something like that, fluid uh, material is coming and it is getting that uh, hard shape. You can see few examples of, on internet that uh, the Parasol brand has created a great animation of that acetate material is coming and it is taking shape. So this type of uh, promotion works well because it creates the uh, new new imagination or it gives a new idea to understand the end consumer yeah i think and and i think you mentioned this trend is keeping on changing so i think we as uh, eyewear designers will also have to follow the trend so i think nowadays instagram filters are are in trend so uh, probably you'll have to follow some trend and about the video again i i i, I saw a comment uh, somebody was requesting to play the video again but I just want to mention that the session is recorded and they can definitely go and see back on YouTube. So uh, we, we, we would not repeat that uh, now. Uh, I think that should be, there's one last question. Uh, what can you suggest about the relationship between the designing and pricing? Like, is there any relationship that the designing and pricing has any, anything to go along? In sense of design cost or that design and the end product cost. Uh, I Negative think that's, that's what yeah. I think that's what uh, the person uh, means that if you design probably uh, complicated things, would you get a large end product pricing or something like that? Okay, yeah, it's so, about end product. Uh, okay, we can. It is uh, vice versa. Generally, when client comes to you, they have fixed price range. Okay, so their target is fixed. They want to create a product uh, for thirty dollar, for example. They want that product, or the target audience is the thirty dollar or thirty to forty dollar. So, as a designer, it is my duty to use such materials. So he can uh, afford that collection, and it is base material or base solution among that target range. Okay, other brands are also there in 30 40 dollar range, but you have provided that based uh, material based design. So, and in that range, he can play with, with that collection. So, this is the way the design uh, price uh, works. Yeah, that balance helps. Yeah, that that's uh, fair, pretty fair. I think in any business, you need to look at that anyway, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so I think we have taken almost all the questions, and uh, again, I would like to thank you, Chirag, for you know uh, showing us a new path on uh, the special uh, eyewear designing, which I think uh, almost uh, half of us uh, were not were maybe probably aware but didn't think about it in that detail what you have actually shown us today thank you again uh, from the whole uh, team online optimal learning series and as well as the attendees you have i mean you some of them have uh, have uh, messaged on the chat uh, that they thank you for your for your time and your presentation and the knowledge you have shared with us thank you thank you all thank you audience thank you online optimal learning session team and thank you for Putin for uh, organizing this uh, phase session and giving me this opportunity yeah most welcome most welcome we do have sessions planned up for next weekend so please stay tuned and we would be emailing you the links as well as the session details in due course so until then uh, stay home and stay safe and have a good day ahead bye <laughs>